Hello Sagittarius, welcome to July. This is Teresa from Tower by T, and I'm getting ready to do your July Taroscope. And I want to bring in some good energy and sacred, create some sacred space around this reading before I do that. And I want to say thank you for liking and subscribing to my channel and sharing. And thank you also for taking the time out, out of your busy day to comment on the videos. I really appreciate all your comments and I read every single one of them. So this month, we have a full moon in Capricorn, and that's going to be on July 9th, and a new moon in Leo on July 23rd. Now the moon in Capricorn is going to be intense. It's going to be connected to Pluto. The moon will be conjunct Pluto, and it'll be opposing the sun and Mars. So we have Mars opposing Pluto, sun and moon opposing each other, sun conjunct Mars, and it's squared by Jupiter. So it's going to be um, a very powerful full moon where things are going to come to a head, come to some type of culmination. And there may be power struggles, there may be manipulation. Um, you just have to be careful not to get caught up in a drama. Don't get let people push your, your buttons. And for you, these this will happen across your second and eighth house. So those are the money houses. Um, you might be in a power struggle over money. Maybe you're negotiating um, salary um, or negotiating with a group because Jupiter is affecting your 11th house. So there could be some kind of group dynamic. Um, and the issue is really centers around self-worth and support because the second house has to do with um, what you value, not only about yourself, what makes you feel secure, um, the eighth house is other people's resources. So um, you're going to be really, your energy will be focused on gaining other resources, um, transforming your life, because the eighth house is also transformation and change, and um, dealing with your inner demons, <laughs> because the eighth house, um, it's kind of like Pandora's box. And Jupiter in the 11th is your hopes and dreams, but Jupiter's fanning the, the um, so you really need to, it's going to be intensifying the, the conflict or the power struggles. Truths may come out, certain things may be revealed at this time, usually full moons reveal things. Um, so the key is to try to remain calm and take the middle, middle ground. Try to see things from both people's perspectives. Try not to overreact. Try not to feel too emotional. This could be an emotional time because the moon conjunct Pluto. It's bringing up deep emotion about what am I worth? Am I getting paid what I worth? Are people around me valuing? Am I valued um, in my, with my friends and with the groups I belong to? These are some of the issues. Um, and um, the way out is really through honoring your inner child. The way out of this conflict is through the fifth house, which would be self-expression. So to take the pressure off, you may want to just have some fun, take some time out, do something creative, do something fun. Um, maybe um, a new romance could help if that's the case. And now the new moon will be in Leo, which is in your seventh house. But because it's at zero degrees, it may, um, well, no, what am I saying? It's not in your seventh house. It's in your um, ninth house, I'm sorry. The new moon will be in your ninth house. So there could be some new opportunity coming that will take you, uh, that involves teaching or higher education or even long distance travel. Um, because it's in zero degree Leo, it might even fall in your eighth house still because it's at the very beginning of the sign. So there'll be a new beginning that will be very transformative in your life. Something new may come up at the end of the month that will help you get out of this conflict and move on to a, a new um, area. So anyway, let's see what the cards say about July. July, what does Sagittarius need to know about love and life in July? What's coming up in love and relationships and anything else that might be important in July? What is coming up for Sag this July?
Ace of Wands. Eight of Pentacles. Knight of Cups. The Fool. The Ace of Cups. The Magician. The Wheel of Fortune. The Eight of Cups. The, the Emperor and the King of Pentacles. Okay, this looks good. Um, so I'm seeing two things here. Okay, the Ace of Wands and the Eight of Pentacles, that's like a career thing. Um, I feel like there's a new job opportunity or, or, an, or an opportunity to go and, and take a new direction in your career path. Because the Eight of Pentacles, it's, it's the Apprentice card. So you're at the beginning. There, there could be a new offer, a new job offer that was offered to you recently, or a new opportunity in your career. And you're ta you're at the so you've got you've entered a new cycle. This is already because here's the offer in the past, Knight of Cups and the Fool, which puts you in a whole new environment. So you have an opportunity to be in a totally new environment, doing something totally different. Um, and it could be a little scary, but at the same time, it's adventurous. And with the Eight of Pentacles here, it's kind of like you're just beginning this new path. And you're working at it and you're learning new things. And um, I, I think it's going to be really successful. There's going to be a little bit of... Um, but not only is there going to be a new career path. So I feel like that's part of July, making a decision about a new career path, working on it. This is the card of working at it you know, learning and working. Um, and then the Ace of Cups is a new love. Or if it's not love, it's creativity. So the Ace of Cups relates to a new beginning in creativity. And the Magician is a card of um, you have all the skills you need to achieve a goal that you, you want. You just have to focus on the positive. I feel like things are changing. Your luck is changing. You have the Wheel of Fortune here. The Magician is about learning how to manifest something So um, by, through creative visualization. It's, you, it's also a card of communication. So you could be doing something that involves communication, um, like marketing or communication, public relations, I don't know, something involving writing. Um, whatever it is, you have the skills, so don't doubt your ability. You have all the skills you need. Just focus on the positive, because I feel like things are changing in your life. And it could also be, not only is, the, I think if you're, if you're in this new job, or this new career path, there's also a potential for a new love. You might be meeting new people. There could be a new relationship on the horizon that's developing. And if it's not love, it's a creative project. So whatever you're doing, it's not only... It's creative. It's something that um, you feel emotional about. So you're giving birth to something new. And the Wheel of Fortune, it's your things are changing. This is the Wheel of Fortune could be something that comes up out of the blue. It's like opportunity that you don't expect. Um, so things are just changing, and you have to move. You have to make a decision. But when I see two aces, I like this is it's exciting. Ace of Wands, Ace of Cups. It's exciting energy. You're excited about it. You're looking forward to it. There, is, there may be a little bit, a little scariness attached to it. The Knight of Cups can also mean a romantic partner, a proposal from a romantic partner um, that puts you in a new environment. So you're like starting new with someone. Um, this person could be very creative, very artistic, very. You feel like there's a soul connection there or a past life connection. This is kind of like a karmic uh, relationship, and it could be somebody with a water sign. Sun, moon, or rising. Um, so that would be Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Um, so this new opportunity, and this is also a time card, the Ace of Cups. So that would be over the summer, June, July, August. So this opportunity or this love relationship will come over the summer. Um, and the Eight of Cups, this is your environment. You're think, really seriously considering moving away from your current situation and moving on to something more fulfilling. So whatever you've been doing up until now, um, in a career situation, you may feel like it's just not satisfying anymore. In a love relationship, you may feel that while the relationship started out really good and you really love this person, 
things are changing and you're feeling that um, it's not working like it was in the past and you're thinking you're considering uh, moving on to something else that's more that's more in line with your needs your emotional needs so there could be a lot of uh, change in July for you um, especially with the eighth house being involved in this full moon that has to do with sex death and transformation not necessarily death in a literal sense more um, the death of a way of life um, and then transforming and moving on to something better that's more in line with who you are. So making choices that have to do with your soul path. Now here in your wish fulfillment sector, you have the emperor. So in a love relationship, you're really looking for someone stable and solid. You're tired of messing around with these immature types. Because the Knight of Cups, you might have been involved with people that were uh, um, very romantic, very fun, um, but very Im kind of immature, not really emotionally available. And you're looking for someone who's older, wiser, more stable. So even if they're not older, they're just reliable. They, you, or, and it's also, the emperor can also mean, um, so, um, so if you meet someone new, it's probably going to be someone a lot more established. Um, maybe someone who's in a position of authority. Or someone who owns their own business. Um, or someone who's just knows how to build things, knows how to organize things. Someone who's very organized, very practical, very, um, maybe not as exciting, but much more stable. And I think at this point in your life, you're looking for stability. Um, so the emperor could also mean that you you have plans on, you want to build something of your own. You want to be the CEO of your own life. Because the emperor is the CEO or the executive card. The um, And actually, if this represents a person, it could be an Aries, Capricorn, or Scorpio even. But um, even if it doesn't fit a particular sign, it's definitely someone very stable. Someone that you can look up to and admire. Almost like a father figure or an authority figure that you trust. Um, it also means, again, that you are focusing your energy on building something stable for your own life. You either want to build a relationship and make it more stable, or you want to build your career and, and um, solidify your position. Um, you want a position of leadership. You're looking for a position of leadership. And um, the eight, and the King of Pentacles is the outcome. So this could represent someone that you might be getting involved with in July. It could be an Earth sign. Um, that would be Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. Um, and this person also deals with money and security and real estate. Uh, land. It could be an accountant could be someone who owns their own business, could be someone who deals with money like a banker. So you might be going to someone for a business loan or you might be involved in some kind of real estate transaction, selling a home, buying a home. Um, and it, all, it could also be a new love, that it could describe the person that you're gonna, like a new relationship coming in with someone who is very family oriented, very stable, very kind of conservative, a no frills type of person but someone that's very reliable. They're going to be there for you. While like, the Knight of Cups is more of a, has unrealistic views about relationships, is a little bit immature. Uh, knights are a little bit more like player types or immature types. The Kings are stable. They're adults. Um, and since it's a King, it might even be someone that you have known. And you always knew this person and now all of a sudden things are changing and you might be seeing them in a different light or may, maybe seeing them as a potential partner. So um, that's a possibility too. But whatever it is, you're moving on. You have two eights here. That's power. The eights are, are number, the number eight is a number of power and money and success. You know, coming into your power, making choices, making decisions um, that are going to enhance your life, either through love or career. Because you have the Ace of Wands and Cups. You have Wands and Cups. When I see a lot of Wands, I, I see, I think of career or action. Um, you have three Cups in the reading. So that's love. Definitely, the, I think there's new love coming in July. You might be leaving one relationship and starting a new one. Or you might be moving away. And then when, when you get into your new environment, you might be meeting different people in the new environment. 
because I feel like you're moving. Uh, there's a possibility of a move into a whole new area. This the the fool card is really exciting. It's like starting a new cycle. It's like you're wiping the slate clean. It's like you're you're ending. You've ended something, and you're in this new whole new scene, new environment, new people, um, a lot of new beginnings, and it's fun. It's going to be exciting. Um, the wheel of fortune is opportunity, opportunity and change. So things are changing and you're okay with change. Sagittarius is good with change. Um, you're like, bring it on. Um, and you have talent and you have the optimism. That's the good thing. The thing about the magician is the power of positive thinking. And that's, that is something that a Sag is really good at because they're very optimistic. That's why you're able to take chances and risks because you really believe that you will succeed. Um, sometimes you could me go over the top, take on too much, but for the most part, you have a pretty optimistic outlook on your abilities and your, you know, and the outcome. You know, you really hope for the best. And so if you do that and you focus on what you want, visualize yourself in a successful relationship, visualize yourself in a successful business situation or partnership, and you will be golden in July. I see good things coming for you. Um, I think that you're going to be really happy with the results, especially around the new moon uh, in Leo. That's because it's also in favorable. It's in trying. You know, it's a fire sign like you. So it's giving you support for new beginnings at the end of the month. Um, so take it. And plus, with Mars connected with the new moon, that's giving you the energy. You know, you're revved up. You're like, come on, let's go. You know, you're at the you're like the horse at the starting gate, chomping on the bit. Um, so it's saying, go, 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 you know, let's go. I want to move. I want to do, I want to achieve and you will. So the full moon might bring, uh, release and endings or at least awareness where you may really be aware of like, Hey, I'm worth more than this. I need to claim more for myself. Um, and if you negotiate carefully, you can achieve that support. And then you have the new moon. It's like, okay, let's go. We've got everything wrapped up. Let's go. Because new moons are also culmination. So you might be finishing up a project, tying up loose ends at the new, at the full moon, and then preparing for this new energy coming. Because not only you're going to have two new moons in Leo, one at zero degrees in July, and then the full moon, I mean, then the new moon eclipse, the solar eclipse in August. So August is good. So the new moon in Leo in July is like the preview of what's to come later. Um, so the major eclipse action will happen in August. Uh, and that will see you making some major changes uh, in your life. Um, and that could involve a move or it could also involve higher education, teaching, learning, um, foreign travel, long distance travel. Um, it's gonna be exciting. It's gonna, it's gonna be right up your alley because Sagittarians love to travel. They love to explore new cultures so you're going to be dealing with all of that later in the year. Um, so I wish you luck for August, I uh, mean July and August. <laughs> but for now, I wish you um, love and luck. And it looks like you've got it this month. So um, I hope this reading was a help to you. And I will talk to you again in August. All right, bye now.